I'm going to tell you five different ways of playing chords. First one is block the chord as just we played. So if you see the chord, you just play C chord, A minor, D. Block the chord. And then second is broken chord. You know it, right? We have learned it already. Broken chord is simply you breaking up the chord and play one note at a time. So if it's a C chord, you're breaking up and play. And if it's an A minor, A minor chord is like this. You play one note at a time. One, two, three, four. We have to hold it the very last one for a two count. Why? We only have three notes, but the time signature is 4-4. Four, four. We need four beats in a measure. Then how are we going to do? One, two, three, four. That's how we play it. Okay? And then D minor. Then you just come up to D and play one note at a time. One, two, three, four. So the last one is two count. And F chord, but C on the bottom. So one, two, three, four. And C chord, but G on the bottom. One, two, three, four. And G chord. One, two, three, four. That's another pattern. So if you play it, second pattern, broken chord, it goes like this. the music and some people likes to minimize the sound and wants to have a quiet song then you can play a one two three four and then holding at the bottom one and ending it here then it's gonna make quiet and soft and smooth sound but instead you want to feel the beat then you add one more note and coming back again then you go back go up and coming down see so if it's a C chord The second pattern because you don't have time to move right after that you have to go to the next chord so you don't have much time actually but if you like it to feel the sound then try it this way I will play it just only the first page and you can hear the difference of the sound
Can you hear the difference? Not really. Maybe if I play it, broken chord, and then adding the third one, at the same time, maybe then you can hear it. Now, listen to the difference. Which one do you like better? Some people like the broken chord and some people like to add the first one. Just, you can play it whatever you want it. It's just your taste. Now, I will tell you the fourth tip. The fourth tip is 151 pattern. Actually, 151 pattern is used most often because you don't have to think about it major and minor. And you can just play with looking at the bass line. So if it's a C chord, one and five means fifth note. And one means the same note, but instead you're going back to this one, going up. So it's actually one, five, eight pattern we chord. It. One, five, eight or one, five, one. And if it's A minor, just play it A and fifth note and the same note again. And D minor, or D major, it really doesn't matter because we don't play a metal note. So one, D, five, D. And what about in this case? F slash C, F chord. But we have to play with a C. Then you play a C, and the next one is you will play it, F chord, and D again, repeat it. Just whatever you play it at the bottom, you repeat it up. So it's rather than one, five, a or one five one we just start with the chord written on it after the slash and play the root which is on the front f and then you repeat the bottom one again this is much easier right that's why most often people play this pattern more than the root position or one five three patterns or other things so one five one pattern is used most often but the problem is when you play a 151 pattern, if there is a slash and chord inversions on it, then it's kind of confusing. So easiest way is you can just play the after the slash. So if it's, for example, F slash C, you play a C first, an F chord, and a C again. Like this, as I told you. Or the next pattern is the sound better, but it's hard to count. But I will tell you the next pattern. C, you definitely has to go with the C and you play it sixth note, which is from the C come up sixth note higher. One, two, three, four, five, six, and go to the C. That's another pattern of one, five, one, the inversions in one, five, one pattern. This is actually sound better, but it's hard to recognize right away. So for example, if we do C slash E, how are you going to do it? You have to play it, start with the E and 6th note, so and then go to the E. So the easiest way to play the chord is F slash C, then you start with the C, play the octave, and then skip down. That's how I do. So if it's E slash G, then you start with the G and skip down. Got it? And then the last pattern is the same as 151 one pattern, but you're coming back to fifth one and then feel the beat. And you play it four beats in a measure. So there is five different patterns. Root position and breaking off chord and play one note at a time. One, three, five. And then the third one is you feel the beat. So you go one, three, five, three, one, three, five, three. And then the fourth one is you play it one, five, one or one, five, A. So Five, one, five. You're going into the 
middle note again and then feel the measure. So five different patterns. You can start working on whatever you wanted. I'm going to play it whole entire song in fourth pattern in slow tempo. Let's see how it goes. That's how you play the song with looking at the chord. Now you know how to play it, right? It seems really hard if you don't know, but if you know the chord and you know how to play the patterns, then it's okay. You just need to practice to figure it out the chord and play it on right time. Of course, you can practice all of the five different patterns at once. But if it's too much for you, then choose your favorite pattern and start working on it. It depends on the song. Maybe we have to use different patterns.
This five pattern is most often used. So if you learn and if you master the five patterns, then you can use this pattern in different songs. And since many of you may love the song, I wrote all the different patterns of the music and overall it. So you can print it out and see which one you prefer to practice. And you can see which one you like better. In the beginning of this lesson, I played with 1585 pattern. And also I added introduction and I and added some notes on the right hands too to make better sound. So if you want it later on, you can practice that way. If you know this song, I bet you're gonna love to play it. If you don't know the song, try to listen to the original singer's song on YouTube. Oh, here is the link you can go on and listen to. I hope you enjoy playing the song and learn five different patterns of the left hand. I will see you next time with more interesting songs. Staying cool and well. Bye!